Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to talk about how to stop unwanted barking. Now, there's so many videos out there that show different people using dogs in situations and if there's one thing that I've learned over my 23 years experience and all the dogs that I've trained is that every dog is different. Everybody's situation is different. And so what I find is the best way to help people solve problems starts with one thing and that's knowledge. If you had the knowledge that you needed, you wouldn't be watching this video to figure out how to stop your dog from barking. So any client that I have and anybody that I help, it always starts about the knowledge. Why is your dog doing what it's doing? How would they stop another dog from barking when they don't want him to? In this video, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know so you can have the knowledge to be able to adapt in any situation you're in when your dog is barking. So let's start out with why, does, why is your dog barking? 99% of the time a dog barks is because they're afraid. Some people think it's protection, it's not. If your dog is barking, they're perceived something as a threat that isn't, and so they're choosing the action of fight to try to stay safe. Avoidance, submission, fight, or flight. So fight is barking, growling, showing of teeth, nipping, or biting. When your dog is doing that, because it wasn't a real threat, nothing happens to them, so they believe it's the barking and only the barking that kept them safe. So we're gonna cover number one, the best tool used and how to use it to stop your dog from barking. But you have to first ask yourself the question, when do I want my dog to bark? When is it acceptable? When you understand and have decided that it's okay for your dog to bark in this situation, but not this situation, you're on the right track to being fair with your dog. So. I always tell people that there's a couple different ways that you can correct a dog uh, as far as electric wise. This is the electric collar and this is what I recommend. Now, not all electric collars are equal. Um, ones that I would say are under that $180 or more or lower range, those are not what I would recommend because the consistency and the quality isn't there. So I'm not sponsored by anybody, this is not a sponsorship, but this is the dog to arc. This is what I would recommend for basically any dog above 25 pounds. So, but the goal behind it is this. If my dog is barking, and so for example, I always recommend to tell, I always recommend to people, I personally never want my dogs barking outside. If they are outside the four walls of the home and they bark, it's unacceptable, which means that whether it's in our backyard, whether it's in the vehicle, or we're out in public walking, or I've got him at the beach and we're running around, whatever it might be, if we are out and about, they're not allowed to bark. But if we're inside the house, it's acceptable. Now I'm gonna explain why in those two scenarios. So if you're outside and your dog is barking, you're obviously out there and you would know if your dog was barking at a real threat. If somebody was truly trying to attack you, you're not gonna care what it is your dog is doing. They can bark their head off and it won't matter because you're gonna see that it's acceptable behavior to try to de detour whoever's trying to harm you. But 99.9% .9 of the time, anytime you're out in public or your dog is outside, there is no actual real threat. Now, in the house, if your dog is barking, you may want your dog to alert you when people are coming onto your property. You might want them to let you know if, if somebody's walking up to the door. If my dogs bark inside the house, I never tell them quiet. I never do anything until I see what it is they're barking at. Once I determine that there's no threat, I can't find any reason for them to bark that is worthy of them barking, that is when I will tell them to be quiet. Now, if there is a real threat, if I see somebody sneaking on the property try, or trying to get in my door or through a window in the middle of the night, I promise you, I'm not gonna tell my dog to stop barking. So, but once I deem that there is no reason to bark, that's when I will say quiet. So in the house, I inject myself into the situation and I say quiet. If they don't listen, they get a correction. Therefore, they are understanding that once I say quiet and they bark after that, stimulation will be applied and then once they quit barking, their reward is I'm not correcting them anymore. 
So they learn that when it's Pavlov theory, they learn that when I say quiet, they shut up. As long as I'm not saying quiet, they will continue to bark or growl or whatever it is I deem as acceptable in the moment. So, but when our dogs are outside or we're driving in a vehicle or we're out on a walk, the biggest reason why it shouldn't be acceptable, at least for me, depending on your situation and the type of area that you live in, a dog that's barking outside obviously can be a nuisance to neighbors, which can cause problem and strife. So if a dog is outside barking, we never want them to think that it's acceptable to bark when they're out on their own by themselves or in the vehicle with you or on a walk. So if that's the case, we do not interject ourselves into the situation. So that's when we would use something like this. This one that I recommend, the dog to arc, has the signal strength to go through walls, go through trees, different things like that. So if I was starting this for the very first time, what I would do is I would put this on. Now how you put it on is you want it to where it's not loose, but it's just snug enough to where it's not gonna slide around on their neck on their own. So I just put this on and I can maneuver it around. That's what it would be like for your dog. If it's too loose and it's just dangling and bouncing all over, what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get consistent connection, therefore the levels of stimulation will not be consistent. Because what we have to have is we have to be able to have these two probes being able to touch the skin or be close enough to the skin to be able to give the stimulation. Now this collar and any electric collar out there is just a TENS unit. It's used all the time in therapy, physical therapy and stuff like that. It's just done at a different frequency. So it creates a sensation on the skin of the stimulation of that electrical tingling feeling that you can increase in level or decrease in level. So if I'm putting this on my dog, I don't know how hard I need to correct them. And what I mean by that is, where's the number at? So with this collar, it goes from zero to 127. So what I would do is I would start at a lo super low level, which is like a five. And if you'll notice, I'm pressing it on a five. It's no big deal. I can't even feel it. In fact, because this collar has a rotary dial, I'm gonna start turning it up. Now I can start to feel it. It's getting a little bit more intense. Still holding my fingers on it. Now it just went off because of the safety of that. So right there, I still had my fingers on it and that was a 70. And I, like I said, this goes to like 125 or 127. But the average dog that I train for the, using this for the hear command and stuff is like around a level 25. So it's important that you always start off low, and what we're looking for is when you hit that button for the first time, you want to see a reaction on your dog where basically they're just kind of looking around like, what was that? Maybe look if the collar is on this side of their neck, and they just kind of do this and look. That lets you know that that was the first time they felt it. So once we find that level, say that level was a 15, and now your dog is barking. When your dog barks, we hit the button, 1001 release. And it's always the continuous button. We, we make sure that we're not hitting a nick, a tone, a vibration, or anything like that. We want the continuous button. So as long as we're holding it down, it's stimulating. So when we hit 1001 release, our dog is gonna feel that. Now, if your dog is barking, more than likely their, love, their adrenaline is rushing and their pain tolerance is going up. So they may not acknowledge that 15 anymore. A nice collar like this, we can press it. We, if we get no acknowledgement, we can hold it down and slowly start to raise it. And now our dog stops barking and they're like, oh my gosh, what was that? Once they stop barking in that moment, we release the button, then we just let it be. We don't tell them good boy, we don't talk to them, we don't do anything like that. But if they go to bark again, and again, this is them being outside where we never want them to bark and we're not interjecting ourselves with it, then if they bark again, we're gonna leave it at that same level, 1001 release. If our dog stops barking, 
then we know that it was just enough to get them to stop in the moment. Now, that level can, can fluctuate depending on their adren adrenaline rush. So that's why it's also good to have this type of unit that has the rotary dial. But when your dog is out there barking and say that they're on a 25, you hit it, they stop. They bark some more after a while, you hit it, they stop. Then they bark some more. Now we know what level is just enough to stop them in the moment. But now what we want to do is we want to find the level that's just enough that they want to avoid in the future. And that's when, with this color specifically, we go up by fives. So if that dog was a 25 and I hit it and they stop barking, but then three minutes later they start barking again, then I put it to a 30. And then if that stops them in the moment, but then they start barking again, then I'm gonna hit them on a 35. I'm eventually gonna get to a level that's just enough where they're like, you know what, I don't ever wanna feel that again. Because it's what we're dealing with again is Pavlov theory. They bark, stimulation is applied, they associate the two, they will, they will stop barking. So this is a conditioning process as well. And so it's really important that you understand that if you go off to work and your dog is outside and they're barking, you're not gonna be able to use this to stop them. So this is for when you are at the house, but it's also a really good way to find a level of stimulation. So that way, if when you're gone, you decide to use what's called a bark collar, you have a better understanding of what level to start your dog on. And Dogtra makes another wonderful bark collar that you could go that route as well. Now let's talk about being inside. Everything that I just said as far as finding the level is, is the same. The difference is now we're interjecting ourselves. So if your dog is barking in the house, we walk around, try to see what they're barking at. We see that they're barking at the neighbor that's walking in front of your house, you know, along the sidewalk or something. They start barking. We see who it is they're barking at. We deem it's not a threat. Quiet. If the dog doesn't stop, that's when we correct them. And it's always a 1001 release. We press it for one second and release it. We never hold it down because we don't want to send our dog in panic because they don't know how to turn it off. So we literally want it to be on and gone. So it's the same in the vehicle. If your dog is barking in the vehicle, 1001 release. Any situation that you're in and you're using this collar, it's important that some, this is some tips. It's important that it's always the same fit. Always make sure to work it into the hair pretty good. Also, these collars, as far as do's and don'ts, never stimulate them if they're touching another person or another dog. Never leave it on in one spot longer than eight hours. It is on their neck. It is pressing on their skin. And so, plus you have the movement. After about eight hours, you can start to cause what's called pressure sores, which then turn into hot spots. So don't do that. Also, another thing is if you have a dog that enjoys swimming or is out in the water, what you want, what you want to make sure to do is understand, and understand that the water will intensify the levels of stimulation. So then instead of starting on that, say if your dog was normally when they're dry and just hanging out is normally on that 15, you would start them out as a five. Just take into consideration that there is adjustments and every single dog is different. When people talk about, well, when my dog feels it, they heighten, they actually start barking more. There are situations where you might stimulate a dog and they don't know what it is. And so they just bah, rah, rah, and they're barking at that stimulation because they don't know where it's coming from or what it is they're doing. There's nothing wrong with your dog doing that. How you handle it though is everything. So a dog that may heighten in that situation, you have to let their mind calm before you ever correct them again. So if you press the button and they Rah! and they go after it, don't say anything. Let your dog calm. And then if they go back to barking, do it again. They may react that same way. They go back to barking, do it again. Remember, this is about repetition. This is about consistency. This is about fairness. So if you just continue to press the button because the dog is barking immediately after you've corrected them, 
you're doing your dog a disservice and you're actually heightening them in panic. And a dog can't think in panic. So the minute a dog panics, we have to let them their mind calm. Let things kind of go back to normal. Don't talk to them, don't say anything to them. Let them just settle. Then again, like I said, if they bark again, do it again. It's very rare that your level will be too high and cause that. Because when it comes right down to it, a dog is gonna react like that. Or if your dog reacts like that, it's because it's just enough to annoy them and it's in their genetics, it's in their nerve structure and their conditioning to fight it. So let their mind calm. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to see over time and every dog is different, every situation is different. How you run this is gonna determine your success. So I highly recommend if you're scared of using this, don't use it. This collar is not for you unless you have somebody that knows what they're doing that's able to show you properly how to do it in person. So other ways that you could get a dog to stop that's out there that I do not recommend. I do not recommend um, things that spray certain smells. I do not recommend the sound. I think, it's fun. I think it's interesting how people will choose a sound to hurt the dog's ears instead of this because they think it's more humane. I don't know about you, but anything that's so loud that hurts my ears is actual pain that can cause damage in my eardrums. We don't wanna do that with dogs. Besides, majority of the time, doesn't work anyways. Don't waste your money. This and a bark collar. So a remote and a bark collar are the best ways to stop your dog from barking. Now, there are going to be instructions for the bark collar as well, as far as how long it can be on them, how it's fitted and different things like that. I would listen to that and go with that. So, but hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how to fix it. This is the number one best way to do it, especially if you're traveling in a vehicle or if your dog barks in a crate in your home. Like I said, any situation where you're in, where you don't want your dog to bark, this is the best way to do it. I would also highly recommend that you watch this video here. It's on dog communication and reading dog behavior. It's gonna give you a better understanding of why something like this works when it's used properly. So, hope you are able to find something to help you in this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Again, my job is to try to give you the best information necessary for you to be able to have the best life with your dog. Thanks again, and have a great day. Bye.